In this video, we'll look at seven important dashboarding tips and tricks that you should consider when you're creating your Tableau dashboards. I'll see you in a bit. I've gone ahead and created a sample dashboard. We will use this as the basis of our discussion when we're talking about the tips and tricks for dashboarding. In this video, we'll talk about the considerations, but I will have a different video where I will walk you through end to end how to create some basic dashboards. The first tip is really more of a foundational knowledge on how we place things in Tableau. When you create a new dashboard, in your sidebar, you're going to see the objects that you can add to your dashboard. So you have your sheets and you also have additional objects other than the worksheets or the charts that you've created. One thing to note is that when we place new objects into your dashboard, they can be placed either as tiled or floating. At any point in time, you can toggle between these two, but it's better to plan ahead and figure out exactly how you want to place your objects. A tiled placement means any of the objects you're going to place on screen will snap to grid and all of the objects that you've added plus anything else that's already there, all of them will take up 100% of the space. For example, if we drag profit by state, when we drag this over, you can see that the graph takes up majority of the space, but on the right hand side, you actually do have all of this space, although it looks like white space, all of this still takes up 100% of the space. So between the chart and the legend, this whole column, all of it takes up 100% of the space. When you drag over another chart, for example, and here we have a profit timeline, this chart will be placed wherever the gray area is. But that is also taking into account all of the objects that are already on screen. So again, it's going to snap to place, and this new chart plus whatever that comes with it will take up 100% of the space. So looking at this, profit by state takes up that much, profit timeline takes up this much. You have these legends and filters, they're actually contained in another box and all of these objects together, they take up 100% of the space. Now the floating components behave differently. The floating components do not snap to grid they don't compete for space in the background. We can place floating components into your dashboard by either clicking on this option, or you can also press shift and then add that component. For example, I can click on floating and drag menu over, and you can see in here that the shaded area is not snapping to grid. It doesn't compete for space for the charts that are already tiled. It is sitting on top of whatever is in your background or whatever is in your tiled. Note that I can also keep my default placement as tiled and whenever I want to add floating components, I can simply press shift and drag a new chart over. At any point in time, I want to float an item. I can simply select that item. So for example, profit by state. On the drop-down, there will also be an option for floating. What we need to keep in mind for tiled is that all components that you place will compete with the space from the background. And what this means is Tableau will make the necessary adjustments. It will nudge all other components and they may go out of place. The caution about floating items is any of the floating items, it's like it's pinned to that place. And if you have components that are automatically readjusting, your floating items might become out of place. So these are just some main considerations when you're deciding to place things as tiled or as floating. So the difference between how you are able to control tiled and floating components, it's manifested in the layout tab of your sidebar. If you have a tiled component, you're gonna find under the layout tab, the position and the size. Although you see these numbers, the up and down arrows are actually disabled. You are not able to change the exact values of the X and Y positions or the width or the height. However, if we decide, let's say to make this map floating, so go to the drop down, click on floating, all of a sudden, 
you're going to see that these options are now enabled. You can either type in the exact values or click on the up and down arrow to change the values. But this also means that this particular chart is now pinned only to that place regardless of whatever else happens in the background. The second tip is all about containers. So what are containers? In your sidebar, you're going to see two objects. You have a horizontal container and a vertical container. You can think of these as invisible boxes that allow you to organize any of the objects that you want to place into your dashboard. It could be charts, could be text, could be images. So let's say we've already sketched out how we want our dashboard to look like. Let's say we want to have a header item. Maybe we want to have a chart in here. Maybe a couple charts right here and maybe another footer at the bottom. But at the very top, you also want to have three different components inside. This is where we can really take advantage of layout containers. It will help us organize our objects. So let's demonstrate some of these. So for example, in here I want to start with a vertical container because I want to stack things on top of each other so we can simply drag that over. Now another thing to note is that containers have a blue border. This is an important distinction because the blue borders give you options specific for the container. It allows you to work with the container. However, some of the other objects that you place, for example, a chart, let's say this profit by state, when you drag this over and you select that specific component, what you're going to see is a gray border. And the gray border has very different options than a blue border or than a container's options. So just something to keep in mind. So let me just undo this first. So we already have our layout container. And if you want to know more how Tableau places things and how it structures things, you can also go to the layout tab in your sidebar. So here you have an item hierarchy. So you can kind of see where things are placed. So let's try to create at least the header section of what we've sketched out. And for now, I'm actually just going to place some blanks first. So it gives me some indication of the type of layout container I have. And from here, we know that the header will have components that are side by side, and that's going to be a horizontal container. So if we drag this over, and let's say in here, we drag an image for our logo. Let's fit this image. Now the other mini tip in here, even though I have dragged over a horizontal container, if I accidentally place the text on top, it becomes a vertical container. So the placement of the object takes precedence over the type of container that you dragged over. So in here, let me just drag it over to the side, making sure that we're typing in our executive dashboard. And perhaps we want to add another worksheet on the side. And anything you don't need, just take them away. And we can take out the top blank object that we've added as a placeholder. You can also set the height and the width of any of the objects that you have on screen. So for example, in here, if you click on the drop down for more options, you can actually edit the image. You can also fix the width, fix the height. The third tip is all about the formatting options you have for the components in your dashboard. For example, this profit by state, if I select this, and if I go to the layout tab, Note that I have options to add borders if I want to, add a background color if I want to, or remove it altogether. I can add padding or spacing either within the container or right outside the container, so inner or outer padding. And just to show you how this works, if we wanted to add a border in here, we can add a border, make that really thick, maybe a different color, you can kind of see that border. If we wanted to add a background, making sure that that component is still selected, maybe in here change this to a bright yellow background color. You can also, if you want to, make this background transparent so you can drop down the opacity just in case you have a background image that you want to show through your chart. Now you can also adjust the outer padding 
and outer padding is the space that you have outside of your border. So for example, if we decide to increase it, you can see that the white space between the border and the next item over increases. The inner padding is the space from the border to your chart. So in this case, if we try to increase this, you can see that there's going to be more space and now the background color is actually showing through. The fourth tip is all about missing objects. By default, when you drag a sheet over, it's actually going to bring all of the objects that are visible at the sheet level into your dashboard. So in this case, we have our chart and we also have our legend. But let's say at some point you go back to the profit timeline and then you add a new filter in here. So let's say show filter for week. When you go back to the dashboard, it doesn't automatically update and show the new filters that you're showing in your sheet. And you might be inclined to think, oh, you just have to remove this and then re-add it. And you don't have to because you can add any of the objects at any point. So in here, when you click on the object, click on the drop down, and remember in here, we're selecting a sheet. So you have the dark gray border in here at any point in time. You can add your legends, you can add your filters, you can add your highlighters. You don't have to remove the object and re-add them just to be able to show those filters. So in this case, if I wanted to add that new filter, go to filters and then add the week of order date. I hope you're finding this video useful so far. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I publish weekly videos on data related topics. Now, tip number five is really all about polish. And there's a lot of things to consider, but I'll just give you a few things to think about. For example, tooltips. Decide if you need tooltips. In here, I have a worksheet that has images because I use this for filtering. So in here, if I click on any of these icons, it actually filters my charts. However, leaving the tooltip here is really confusing. So my suggestion, if you don't need the tooltips, do not show them. So where you can take away these tooltips when you go back to that original sheet and from here, tooltip, just unselect the show tooltips. Now you have other options. You may decide to show the tooltip, but not show the command buttons. So that's totally up to you. But if you don't need the tooltips, do not show them. If you do need to show the tooltips, my recommendation is at least format it. So right now, there's more and more people that are familiar with Tableau, and that number will just increase. Now, the tooltips are nice. However, at some point, especially if you've been working with Tableau a lot, or if you've been seeing a lot of dashboards already, this tooltip where you have the label colon value, it feels so mechanical. It feels like there hasn't been any thought that's been put into this dashboard. So my recommendation is do a little bit of formatting. A little formatting goes a long way. The third thing I will recommend you consider all the time will be grid lines. Personally, I take away the grid lines and I only add it if I know it's needed for reference. I feel that simple step already polishes your chart. Under Format, Lines, this is where you can take away your grid lines, either for the whole sheet, maybe for rows, or maybe for columns. The next tip I have is all about branding. There are a lot of visual best practices on what colors to use, how to use colors, making sure that you take into account color blindness, and how different colors might come across. However, another big consideration is branding. If a company's color is green or red or purple or whatever that color is, we have to work with them. So in the example that I have in here, this fictional company has a green tree for color. So I will have to work with these colors if I want to create a branded dashboard for this company. Now, if the company already has a set of colors that they can use, then we want to ask for those colors. However, if you don't have those colors ready, one alternative you have is to use a tool that gives you different sets of colors based on maybe an image. Now, Interworks has created a fantastic tool. I've been using this for a lot of years. 
This is called the color tool for Tableau. So you can pick your own colors and then, and then add them here and it will generate different kinds of color palettes for you. But if you do have an image, we can simply drag and drop that image onto this tool. So for example, in here, I can simply drag this logo over and it will generate a color palette for me. And from here, I can also just call this you know, the brand name. So let's say Green Tree Brand. And what it generates on the right hand side is actually a Tableau Preferences file. Now, if you already have entries to this Tableau Preferences file, you simply just want to add the color palette options. You simply want to copy and paste these to that file. However, if you don't have a preferences file yet, you can copy all of the contents into your new file. I will put a link down below. There is documentation and tutorial on how to add your own color palette from the Tableau website, and it's a very complete reference. But just to show you what it looks like in my environment, so in here in my Tableau repository, I have created a preferences.tps file. It's simply a text file that has a different file extension. And if I open this up, this is what it looks like. So you want to save this file and it's not going to be visible right away if you have Tableau open. So you do need to restart your Tableau instance. But once you restart your Tableau instance, so let's say in here, let's go to this worksheet. And if I wanted to edit these colors, if you click on the color property in your marks card, and if you edit the colors, you will be able to see the new colors that you've generated from this tool. And last but not least tip for dashboarding. I think this is really critical, especially for dashboards that are already deployed to production and continuously used by the business is making sure that you have an indication of how fresh or how outdated your dashboard is. In a lot of the dashboards that I create, I will provide the source of the data and also the last time that data was refreshed. And you can decide where this needs to go. It could be in a footer, it could be in your header, as long as you're consistent. But how do we add this? What you can do is you can create a single worksheet. We're simply going to change the title. So double click on the title. And in here, we can probably type in data source. And then in the insert dropdown, you can add your data source name. And you can also specify when the last time this data source has been refreshed. So from here, insert data update time. And you can put this worksheet in your dashboard again as a footer or as a header. Now, one interesting thing about this particular worksheet is this requires at least one field from your data source, because otherwise it doesn't know which data source you're talking about if you had 10 of them and it doesn't know which time it's supposed to display. So in here, I've simply created a calculated field that has nothing. It's just a blank. I'm going to drag it over to text. And this already is enough indication to Tableau to figure out which data source and which timestamp I want to include. So these are my seven tips. Some of them are shorter than others. I hope you found this video useful. I hope these are considerations that you can take to your work, take to your projects, especially if you're creating them for clients, for your employers, for your managers. I will have additional videos on dashboarding. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again next time.